What's going on guys, Anthony from Chronometer Check here and today we're going to be doing an unboxing and first impressions of a brand new Vistok Commandeer Ski that I just got in. This is, well it's brand new to me at least. This is the Vistok Commandeer Ski K65 and this is a GMT. So without any further ado, let's get right into it. So a little bit, uh, something a little bit different about this watch in particular is that like I just said, it is a GMT. Now, first of all, uh, one thing I forgot to do, quick wrist check, I am wearing my Vestock Amphibia just to kind of complete the package. I have my regular classic Commandeer Ski here, my Amphibia on the wrist, and now my brand new Commandeer Ski Classic in the unboxing. So yeah, so this is a kind of a little bit different in terms of the Commandeer Ski models because this one is sort of more like a fully featured Commandeer Ski, and I'll explain that in a minute, but uh, it also is more expensive. So compared to the typical Commandeer Ski, it has a stainless steel case instead of just a chrome plated brass case. Uh, so it's much heftier, much more solid in the hand, and just overall feels like a much more quality piece. Now it's a lot more comparable actually to the Amphibia just because of the stainless steel case, the build quality. It also has 200 meters of water resistance compared to the 30 meter water resistance of this Commandeer Ski. So this is kind of like a Commandeer Ski that's just super souped up and almost feels more like wearing a Vostok Amphibia than wearing a regular Commandeer Ski. And you can see that dial is really, really nice and has quite quite a lot of interesting things going on. So you see the subdial on the top left at the 10 o'clock position, and what that actually is, is just the regular seconds subdial. So let's go ahead and pull out this crown to give it a wind. Of course, this is, it does have the, you know, the wobbly crown like all the stocks do, but that is a intended design feature. Now you see the seconds starting to move. Now this is the actual seconds hand, whereas the, the large red second hand is the GMT. It's not a regular second hand like to keep the time. So how the GMT works is it's actually not a, you know, fully independent GMT hand in that you can't just go in there and just, you know, set it to control it and move it to whichever hour you want. But what it does is it just moves at half the time of the regular hour hand and it just moves in half the increments. And then you use the bezel, see the 24 hour bezel to time where the second time zone is. Now on more normal GMT watches, what that GMT hour hand is gonna be able to do, you'll be able to move it independently and then you'll also be able to move the bezel, the 24 hour bezel, to click it into place and then you'll be able to use it to track not one, not two, but three time zones total. Because of course you have your main time zone with the hour and minute hand, that's you know the time zone you currently are at. You could track a second time zone with the GMT hour hand and then you'd be able to track a third one by changing the bezel. Now aside from that, this is actually a really, really cool watch. You know, like I said, it does, it is sort of more like the Amphibia, which is really, really awesome. It does have a couple of cons such as you see the case is very kind of geometric and angular and some I like that I kind of like that design but it is very very sharp and especially like over here in the bottom underneath it's very very sharp and not smoothed out very well so it actually does kind of like dig into your wrist a little bit and it's kind of annoying when you're moving your wrist around now I definitely think a NATO strap is going to kind of alleviate this problem, make it so much more comfortable. And on top of that, I definitely feel like this watch sort of belongs on a NATO strap. So I actually tried to size the bracelet. As you can see, I have some bracelet links here, but it's just so cheap and just so almost, it's not even worth it to size a bracelet. This watch, in my opinion, definitely belongs on a NATO strap for me at least. Of course, you could put on, you know, whatever strap you want. And the good thing about these lugs are that because it's straight, it's very, very easy to find a metal bracelet with straight end links. Whereas if you're gonna find a metal bracelet with curved end links to fit a more curved case, that's a lot more difficult. So because this does have straight end links, you could pretty much use, there's, there's a huge variety of metal bracelets with straight end links. So you should have no shortage there, such as the mesh bracelet that I have on my Vostok Amphibia. It's the same deal here. I don't know if this, this bracelet, I don't really think it would work as well. And they are different dimensions, and I'll get to that in a second. But yeah, you can use whatever bracelet you want. The bracelet it comes with is absolute junk as a lot of Vostok bracelets are. The finishing is not too bad. Even on the case itself, it's pretty good actually. One of the better Vostoks I've seen in terms of finishing because it is all brushed, or as compared to the all pop polished, you know, nature of the stock amphibia. This just makes it look kind of cheap in my opinion, and it's not done too well. Bracelet, 
really, really junk. The clasp is absolutely terrible. It feels, oh man, it feels disgusting. I don't know how to explain it. It feels like there's app, it does click into place, but it feels like, uh, it feels like playing Legos and the Legos aren't really connecting too well and you have to kind of like, it's not good. So I'm just gonna get rid of this bracelet like literally almost instantly. Now, as far as dimensions, let's take a look. So it does have a 41 millimeter case. So, you know, kind of getting up there, uh, very similar to the Vistock Amphibia, but it does have a pretty big lug to lug size. This is a 49 lug to lug. So if I throw it on my seven inch wrist for you, that's about my limit for me. I don't really want to wear a watch bigger than this in terms of lug to lug. Um, there are watches that I could get away with that are bigger in diameter as long as they have, you know, this lug to lug or even smaller because I think it's 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 just getting at that point where it almost overhangs on my wrist and that's the line you don't want to cross. Um, as far as thickness, you see it does have a domed acrylic crystal, which is really awesome. I love the way it looks. Just look at that. Beautiful. I think it makes it look super amazing, but it does add some thickness. It is about a 14 or 15 millimeter a thick watch, so pretty thick, but honestly, it doesn't feel like a super thick watch because of the sort of curved lugs at the end. So that's kind of a little nice touch to make it a little bit more wearable. So good job of stock on that. Um, the price is pretty good on this watch. I got it for, I believe, $78 shipped or somewhere around there, which is about the same as you could get of a stock Amphibia. So it's kind of like just a more premium version of the Vistock uh, Commandeerski to compare with the Vistock Amphibia. So it's sort of like you can have your pick instead of just picking the, because, okay, I'll say this. The Amphibia is way better of a watch than the Vistock Commandeerski. I still like this one. It's kind of interesting in its own right. It's nice and tiny. It's mechanical hand winding, things like that. But this is sort of just a more modern and you know upgraded version that I can actually compare to the Vistock Amphibia. It has the water resistance and it also has the added feature of being a GMT. So that's really cool. That's actually why I got it. It's actually my first GMT watch ever, even though it's not a true GMT. It's still a very cool watch, still very cool to have. I'm glad to have it to add to my uh, little family of the stocks and just, you know, they could all live happily ever after in my watch box and uh, maybe come alive at night like Toy Story. I don't know what they do when I sleep. But yeah, anyway, guys, I will eventually have a review up on this. I know I have a huge backlog of reviews that I need to do, but I just got a new camera. I don't know if you noticed this. I just got a new camera. So uh, I was kind of waiting for that to pump out my my full reviews to make it as good production quality and look as nice as possible. So hopefully it will. But anyway, guys, hope you did enjoy. Don't forget to leave a like. I really appreciate it. Uh, let me know what you think about this watch in the comments below and follow me on Instagram. I'll put my Instagram in the links below so you could kind of keep up to date. I post pictures of all my watches and on different straps and stuff so you could see how they look in different straps and different scenarios, blah, 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 all that. And uh, just kind of keep in touch with me. And I really like to be able to see your guys collection as well so yeah be sure to drop me a follow down there and yeah that's about it guys thanks for watching this has been anthony from chronometercheck.com uh, subscribe for more videos in the future including a review of this bad boy and with that said that's about it